Hey everyone, I'm Melanie, and this is Aloe Yoga's 30 Days of Mindful Movement. We're already at week three. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us with your practice. Uh, we're so excited to hear uh, what you have to share with us, so please follow us on YouTube and comment below. Week three's practice is fire. It's all about creating heat, creating more energy, and uh, transforming from within. So our practice will focus on building heat in our core and creating uh, more energy through the body to go deeper into some poses like the splits. We'll begin our practice today lying down on our backs. Start by feeling the energy of your feet grounding into the earth, back firming into the floor, palms pressing firmly into the mat. Start to deepen the breath and really hear the sound of your breath. The ujjayi pranayama, that slight closing of the glottis so that as we breathe, slightly constricting the back of the throat helps us heat up the breath, and as the heat enters our body, we start to heat up the whole body without even moving, just with the breath. And now that we've found the steady inhale and exhale, we'll start to add some movement to this. So as you inhale, press your feet into the floor and lift your back up off the floor. So lower back, middle back, upper back lift, engaging your glutes, pushing your palms down, and you'll exhale to roll your way down. Again, inhale, roll up, lifting your hips, and exhale to roll your way down. One more time, rolling up, articulating through the spine, through each vertebra, and exhale to roll your way down. Then we'll add the arms to this. So as you inhale, you'll reach the arms over your head, lifting your hips. And as you exhale, you'll roll down, reach the arms forward, and look between your knees, taking a little crunch. Again, inhale, lift your hips, arms reach back. And exhale to roll down, arms reach forward. Again, inhale, lift your hips, arms reach back, and exhale, roll down through the spine. Good, and you'll inhale, lift your hips. As you exhale, you'll roll down, reach the arms forward, right knee into your nose. Place the foot down, lift your hips, arms reach back. And then you'll roll down, left knee into your nose. Keep switching, inhale, hips lift. Exhale, roll down, right knee into your nose. Once more, inhale, lift your hips, arms reach. Exhale, left knee into your nose. Good, then you'll lift your hips, arms reach back. Exhale, roll down, reach the arms forward, both knees in. Again, feet flat as you lift. Exhale, roll down, reach forward, both knees in. One more time, lift your hips, arms reach back. Exhale, roll down, both knees in. And you'll keep your knees in as just the arms reach. And you'll exhale. Reach and exhale. Reach and exhale, curl into a little ball. Reach and exhale, curl in. From here, hands come behind your head. You'll reach your left leg forward. Right knee comes across your chest. And then you'll come back to center and switch. Left knee comes across. Good. Switch sides and you'll twist. And switch and twist. So if you can, you'll keep both shoulders off the mat as you twist. And twist. One more time each side, twist and twist. Then both knees in. You'll reach your feet up towards the ceiling. Flex your feet and reach your heels down and away. Both knees in, toes up. Heels reach down and away. Back stays pressing into the floor. Again, knees in and reach the feet up and away. Knees in, reach up and away. From here up, in 
and out. We're just reversing the circles up, in, and out. Feel the fire you've created, that heat radiating from your core, heating your whole body as you move. Good, and then knees apart, and you'll bring your knees over to one side, and then butterfly them open, and twist. So we're still taking this element of creating heat in the core, and now adding an element of hip opening to this. And you can keep the knees bent, or maybe you start to straighten and bring the legs around, making sure you clear the area that you're practicing in so you don't hit any sort of furniture or inanimate or animate objects around you. And you'll come back to center, gently pull your leg in, and you'll switch, and switch, and switch. Your head and your shoulders can stay on the floor, or maybe for extra heat, you can lift your shoulders up off the mat and bring your nose towards your shin. And once you've worked both sides evenly, you'll bring your legs in, give them a hug. And maybe your feet come towards your head, or maybe they look like they're reaching straight up to the ceiling. Exhale, try to hug the legs in closer. And then you'll rock up to a seated position and fold forward over your legs. You can stay there, or maybe you roll your way back down lifting your legs up and back. And then you'll roll down, again, articulating through the spine, and you'll fold. Good, again, slow and controlled, lifting your hips. And you only go as far as you'd like to go. No strain in the neck or in the shoulders. Once you find a nice little rhythm here, then your practice becomes a moving meditation. Once more. And then lower down with control and fold forward over your legs. Good, inhale, stoking the fire that you've built and exhale to fold. Again, inhale and exhale. Fold a little bit deeper, keeping that heat we've created. Inhale and exhale. Fold and you'll flex and point. Flex and point. And you'll notice that through this practice, we're really keeping the movement in some of these poses that maybe normally we feel like we just sit and hold. And we're doing that to encourage the body to slowly, slowly open and also keep the heat rising as we move through our practice. So then you'll fold, maybe hold onto your toes and reach your toes down to the floor. If you can't reach for your toes, you just hold anywhere on your legs and you gently encourage your chest to crawl forward. Maybe moving a little from side to side to encourage the lower back to open. And from here, you'll cross at the legs or bring your knees over to one side to make your way back to downward facing dog. And you'll pedal through the feet. Lift your heels, bend your knees, and press your chest back to open up the shoulders. Slowly straighten and send your heels back and down. Again, heels lift, bend your knees, and press your chest back. Slowly straighten and send your heels back and down. From here, right foot stays on the floor, left leg goes back behind you, and you'll just let your toes gently graze the floor. Firm your palms down, squeeze your belly in, left leg is solid, and you'll kick your left leg up 
and down. So there's tension through the whole leg. You're engaging your glutes, pulling up on your kneecap and your quad. Kick up and down and up and down. And you're really bracing the core, feeling your belly button squeezing in, feeling the rib cage hug in so that the rest of your body stays really stable and still as you lift the left leg and then you hold and then you'll squeeze your butt and pulse the foot up higher. Up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Squeeze and hold. Keep reaching your toes higher and higher, pressing your chest back. And you'll bring your left foot down. Right leg lifts. And you'll bring your nose and your knee to touch. And you'll place your foot between your hands. Back knee down. And you'll inhale to sweep the arms up. Big breath in. And you'll exhale, bring both hands down, and you'll straighten out your right leg for a hamstring stretch, and you'll fold. And from here, you'll point and flex, point and flex. And you'll flex your foot. If you can reach your toes, you can gently pull back on your toes. Otherwise, you can use a towel to pull back really stretching out the connective tissue along the sole of your foot. From here, both hands down, you'll turn your right toes out and in. Again, encouraging not just the muscles, but also the connective tissue, the nervous system, even your joints to open through these small repetitive movements. You'll turn your right toes out to the side, walk both hands to the side of your mat and squeeze your inner thighs together. Good, inner thigh squeeze, keep pressing actively that right heel down. Then hands walk over to the other side. So left knee is directly underneath your hip, right foot is flat out in front of you. You'll rock your hips backwards and forwards. Starting there, maybe you start to inch your foot forward a little bit further, a little bit further, maybe elbows come down to the mat. For those of you who are more flexible, maybe you slide your foot out even further and your hips come down to the mat. And it's the same idea. You're rocking forwards and backwards, moving through the pelvis to floss out the hips. Good. And then you'll return to where you started in that half split. Lunge forward, left hand comes down, right hand presses the thigh away, and you'll move your hips from side to side. From here, both hands come down, and you'll slide your right leg back to plank pose. Holding plank, you'll squeeze your belly in and push the floor away, rocking your chest forwards and pressing the heels back, forwards and backwards forwards and backwards, and then you hold and push. Then both knees come down, you'll lower your chest down, rolling the shoulders back, lifting your chest, and hips go up and back for downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet, so you're standing at the back of your mat in a forward fold. You're welcome to stay here, or maybe you bring your arms around the backs of your legs and give yourself a hug. Every time you exhale, feel that sense of surrender as your belly and your thighs connect or inch their way a little closer to each other. And as you breathe, keep bringing the energy, your intention back to your core, your center, feeling the heat that you've created keeping that heat as we move to the other side. Palms pressed down, downward facing dog. This time we're bringing our right toes behind us, really engaging the right leg as left heel presses down, palms pressed down. Keeping the leg nice and firm, we'll kick up and lower, kick up and lower. 
really keeping the core stable, nice and firm to really focus on opening up the hamstring and the hip flexors on the right side. So left hamstring, right hip flexors. And then you'll kick up, hold, and pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you'll hold, engaging your glutes, pointing your toe, pressing your chest back, lifting higher, higher, higher. And you'll bring your right foot down. Left leg lifts. And you'll bring your nose and your knee to touch. So knee comes forward, thigh towards your rib cage, and you'll place your foot between your hands. Back knee comes down. Feel as if you're dragging that right knee forward. Inner thighs hug into your midline. Reach the arms up and back. Keep squeezing your right glutes. And you'll exhale, bring your hands down, straighten out your left leg, and fold over your thigh. Soften the shoulders, relaxing your face, and reaching your chest forward towards your toes. And you'll point and flex here. Again, encouraging the back of your leg to open. And then you'll pause, flex your foot, and if you can't, you'll grab onto your toes, pull back onto your toes. If you can't reach, no worries. Keep encouraging chest to come forward. Then let go, both hands come down, turn your toes out and in. Toes turn to the left side, walk both hands to the left side of your mat, squeezing inner thighs together, turning your chest towards the side of your room. And hands walk over to the other side. And you'll rock your hips backwards and forwards. Maybe the elbows come down, maybe you start to slide your left foot forward out in front of you, feeling the stretch in the groins. So you can always put some padding underneath the hips here, otherwise hips can come all the way down. And you're still rolling forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards to floss through the hips. Breathing into whatever spaces feel tight, feeling an engagement of the legs. So even here, feel your sitting bones squeezing in towards each other to keep the legs and the hips active. Eventually, when you're ready, you'll make your way back up onto your knee and turn forward for your half splits. Lunge forward and push the left thigh away, moving your hips from side to side. Good, then hands come down and you'll slide your left leg back to plank pose. Holding plank, squeezing your belly in, squeezing your glutes, feeling tailbone back towards your heels, pubic bone towards your neck, feeling your heels hugging in towards your midline, palms hugging in towards each other, the whole body's working together. Muscles are squeezing into the bones. And from here, if you'd like, you can lower the knees down, otherwise knees stay lifted as you lower chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale back to downward facing dog. Once more, you'll walk your hands back towards your legs and take a forward fold at the back of your mat. So whatever is comfortable for you, maybe fingertips on the mat, maybe you give your legs a hug. So last time, we just wrap the arms around the legs. If that feels pretty accessible, maybe you take your fingers in between your legs and try to touch your nose. Right? And if that feels accessible, then maybe you take your feet a little bit wider. You can also bend your knees slightly and try to touch your ears, looking up towards the ceiling. So deep forward fold. If you need to keep the knees bent, that's okay as well. Whenever you're done, you'll just relax and walk your hands back to downward facing dog taking a moment to reset the body. One more time, left toes back behind you, and you'll kick up and lower. Kick up 
and lower. Kick up and lower and kick. Maybe going a little bit faster. And as the leg moves, it creates instability, but we've created so much fire in the core, so much heat to open up the body, yet still remain strong and grounded and centered. We'll lift up and hold and pulse up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold here. Keep engaging your glutes, pointing your toe, lifting your heel higher, pushing chest back. Good, and then left foot down. Lift your right leg straight back, keeping hip square. You'll bring your knee forward towards your nose and hover. Place your right foot between your hands. Back knee comes down. And from here, you'll interlace your fingers and push the thigh away. Good, hands can stay here. We want to lift the chest to get the weight of the rib cage directly over your hips so the hips encourage to, are encouraged to open. Or for a little more encouragement, we can place our hands on our hips and gently ease the hips forward, putting as much weight or as little weight in the hands as we'd like. One more option, fingers reach down towards the floor. Maybe one finger, eventually all of your fingers. Then both hands come down and you'll straighten out your right leg. And taking a body roll, lift your chest and reach the chest forward and down. Again, lift up and take it forward. One more time, lift and take it forward. And from here, using the heat and the strength we've created, pressing your fingertips down, squeezing your belly in and lifting your heel up off the floor, bringing your thigh towards your rib cage. Even the intention of lifting your heel is work in itself, even if you don't physically see your heel lifting. Good, and then your foot comes down and you can start to either slide your foot forward towards the splits a little bit more, sliding out and in, out and in, hands can be on blocks, or you can go the other way where you slide back, sit on your heel or sit on top of a block or a blanket and bring your chest down. All right, so all of these options are great. They work the hips and the hamstrings a little bit differently, so it's not necessarily that one is more advanced than the other. You can go by feel. If you do this video more than once, then you can start to vary the options as well. For those of you who are comfortably all the way down in the hips, uh, in your splits, hands can stay on the mat or on your blocks, and you can slide your hips up and slide them down, slide them up and slide them down. So again, if they're not all the way there, you just slide out and in, if they're all the way down, lift and lower. If you don't need the support of your hands, arms can reach up and you lift and lower, engaging your glutes, engaging your hips and lower. All right, so we're using the strength in the core, the heat that we've created in the hamstrings to open up the hips a little bit more. And from here, hands come down. You'll slide your heel back into your half split and lunge. Left hand or left elbow rests on the mat as you push the right thigh away and you move your hips from side to side. Both hands come down, slide your right foot back to plank pose. This time in plank, you'll lift your right foot up off the floor, hover your heel. Right heel lowers down and left heel lifts. Place it down, right arm reaches forward. Try to keep your body as stable as possible. Right hand comes down, left arm reaches forward, and you'll hold here. From here, both hands come down on your feet or on your knees. You can lower down, taking your vinyasa. Inhaling to lift your chest and exhaling back to downward facing dog. Take a moment to come back to your breath, back to that place of stillness in your body and in your mind. And when you're ready, we'll take the other side. So right toes back and you'll kick up and lower down and kick. And maybe now that we've gotten the hang of it, we go a little bit more quickly and more quickly to create some more heat, that fire within us. that energy that radiates through our body 
to really energize the body and create more space. And your toes lift and you'll squeeze and lift up and up and up. And pause, hold, squeezing your butt, pointing your toe up towards the ceiling. And you'll bring your right foot down, left leg lifts back behind. And you'll bring your thigh in towards your rib cage, knee to nose, and hover. Left foot places between your hands, right knee comes down, and you'll interlace the fingers and push your thigh away. Engaging your right glutes, feeling thigh squeezing towards each other. We can stay here, or maybe hands come onto the butt, and you'll gently encourage the hips forward. And you push as little or as much as you'd like. If you'd like to go further, hands reach down for the floor. Maybe one finger, maybe all of the fingers, or somewhere in between. Then hands come onto uh, either side of your foot or onto blocks as you send your hips back and fold over your thigh. Roll up, and heart reaches forward and down. Again, roll up, lifting, and exhale to fold. One more time, lift up, reach the heart forward, and fold. Good. And then you'll squeeze your belly in, come up onto fingertips, push the floor away with your hands, but you're really using the heat we've created in the core, lift your heel up towards your thigh, or your thigh towards your belly, I should say. Belly towards thigh, thigh towards belly, really creating some compression here. Good, and you'll lower down and start to slide your heel either forward towards the split or slide it back. Whatever you did on the other side, to keep both sides even as much as we can. All right, so if we're taking this version where we're sliding out and in, the work is to really press the heel into the floor and feel left knee, left hip drawing back as the right knee, right hip draw forward and you release. And you keep easing your weight slowly, slowly over time. The hips open and come down to the floor. Fingers can stay on the mat for support as you lift and lower. Or maybe from here, arms reach up and you squeeze, engage your thighs, lifting your hips up off the floor and lower down. Again, lift and lower and lift and lower. Just recognizing that these things take time be patient with yourself, breathing through any sort of discomfort into your expansion. Hands come down, and you'll slide your way back to plank, finding firmness through the whole body. This time, a right foot lifts up off the mat, and you'll hold and you can reach the left arm forward, keeping your body as still as possible. Arm and leg come down, and we'll switch sides. So starting by lifting left foot, belly squeezes in, engagement through the shoulder, pushing the floor away with that left hand, with that right foot, right arm reaches forward. And then everything comes back down. You'll bring your knees to the floor and send your hips back to your heels for child's pose. Settling into your breath. Walk both hands over to the right side. Left hand can press the right palm down. You can send your hips over to the left a little further to really stretch out the left side of your body. Then hands walk over to the other side. Right palm presses firmly down on the left. Encourage the hips to move over to the right side. Back to center. You'll walk your feet through or hop your feet through. 
so that you're sitting down on your butt with your legs out in front of you and you'll fold forward over your legs. And you might notice that feel, this feels very different than it did earlier. With control, we'll lift up and slowly, slowly, with control, lower down into our Shavasana. Now that our work is done, he'll just allow the muscles to release away from the bones. Every inhale a little bit longer and every exhale a little fuller. Inhaling to create more space in the body, in the mind, and exhaling to feel anything that you don't need, any sort of tension or stress or tightness, any sort of pain or frustration, anything that's not serving you. Allow that to release out of your body into the floor, past the floor into the earth, sinking deep into the earth's core, being consumed by the fire at the center of the earth. It simply disappears. And that concludes our fire practice for today. I'll see you next time on your mat. Namaste.